1982, a pair of robotic pioneers embarked on a journey to one of the most hostile environments in our solar system, the surface of Venus. The Soviet Union's Venera 13 and 14 probes were engineered to withstand conditions that could melt lead. Pressures rivaling the depths of Earth's oceans, and an atmosphere saturated with corrosive acid. An environment that can only be described as hellish. Their missions were short-lived, but groundbreaking, revealing Venus like never before or since. Yet, what became of these robotic explorers after we lost contact? After decades of exposure to such a hostile environment, what would these probes look like today? You're watching V101 Space. My name is Rob, and if you enjoy diving into the wonders of space, then why not subscribe? There is so much more to come. The Venera program, meaning Venus in Russian, is a fascinating piece of Cold War history. Many people don't realize that the Soviet Union was sending data and pictures to Earth from the surface of Venus months before NASA captured the first images from the surface of Mars, for example. It had never been done before and has never been done since. Venera 13 and 14 were arguably the most successful missions of the Venera program. They were a culmination of decades of research, a cycle of continuous adaptation based on data and trial and error. These 2.7 meter tall probes were built for one purpose, to survive for as long as possible where nothing else could. To endure the unimaginable, an atmospheric pressure 92 times that of Earth, the equivalent of being nearly a kilometer underwater. Temperatures exceeding 460 degrees Celsius, far hotter than your oven's highest settings. And a suffocating atmosphere of carbon dioxide, with clouds that rain rotten egg-smelling corrosive droplets of sulfuric acid. So how could anything human-made possibly endure such hellish conditions? Their resilience came from advanced materials of the time, along with some very clever engineering. Although, unfortunately, certain details about the materials used in their construction remain sparse, likely due to the classified nature of the Soviet era. However, there are some grains of information that I could find. The descent lander was a hermetically sealed pressure vessel, meaning it was completely airtight, which contained most of the instrumentation and electronics, mounted on a ring-shaped landing platform and topped by an antenna. Each probe's airtight sealed pressure vessel was likely formed in several sections, bolted and then sealed with gold wire gaskets. They were covered in a layer of thermal insulation and a thin outer skin of titanium, known for its high strength and resistance to corrosion. The pressure vessel was lined inside with insulation, possibly layers of fiberglass and metal foil. Stainless steel components likely braced the inside against the immense pressure, protecting the scientific instruments and electronics housed inside. Noble metals such as gold and platinum, known for their excellent corrosion resistance and electrical conductivity, were probably used for critical components and connectors. Copper might have been used for electrical wiring, and the cameras were protected behind thick pressure windows made of quartz. Along with an ingenious cooling system that utilized phase change materials, which absorb heat by melting, and so delay the overheating of the probe, Venera 13 and 14 successfully performed their missions. Yet even these robust materials were eventually no match for the relentless conditions of Venus. Here on Earth, materials react to their environment in fascinating ways. 
Beneath the ocean, ships slowly corrode, their steel consumed by salt water, while marine life transforms them into beautiful artificial reefs. In arid deserts, sun and wind etch metals and rocks into strange weathered forms. But Venus is no Earth. The reactions there are swifter, stranger and far more destructive. Venera 13 landed first, touching down on March 1st, 1982, followed by Venera 14 just four days later. Once on the surface, they were greeted by the planet's famous searing temperatures, crushing pressure and toxic atmosphere. Incredibly, we can see the probes and their surroundings from the images they captured just moments after they had landed. Each image revealed a barren, volcanic landscape, with rocks strewn across a cracked surface, bathed in a eerie, yellowish glow that is filtered through the dense, toxic clouds above. These were the first and only colour photographs ever taken from the surface of Venus. We can even listen to their surroundings because they also recorded the sound of this hellish environment. A faint, haunting rush of wind sweeping across Venus's surface. However, as incredible as their surroundings are to view and to listen to, the harsh conditions would have soon begun to take hold, gnawing at the probe's exposed surfaces. The immense pressure, 92 times that of Earth's, would have been pressing relentlessly, like a small car pushing down on every centimetre of their bodies. For a brief moment though, the probes endured, lasting far longer than had been expected. Venera 13 transmitted its final signal after 127 minutes, and Venera 14, weakened by the same conditions, lasted just under an hour. Then there was silence, forever. Although their transmissions didn't necessarily stop due to the harsh conditions, Instead, it was more likely because the orbiting spacecraft that relayed the signal to Earth moved out of range. They simply lost contact with each other. Nonetheless, after losing contact, Venus would have continued to attack the probes. The external heat would have been so intense that once the cooling systems failed, the temperature inside the vessels would have skyrocketed. Any polymer materials used for wiring, seals or gaskets perhaps, would have charred and vaporised. Within just a few hours of losing contact, the external atmosphere probably entered the vessels. Sulphur dioxide and other acidic gases would have rushed inside, corroding and oxidising the internal metal components, killing off the probes for good. Over the coming weeks, months and years, the titanium and steel framework may have softened. Corrosive sulphur compounds would have eventually crept into every crevice, eating away at once pristine surfaces, forming a patchwork of darkened scars. Today, more than four decades later, what remains of Venera 13 and 14 is of course a mystery. The surface of Venus is shrouded by a thick blanket of gas, meaning we cannot see the region where they exist. However, they are certainly just silent sentinels on a lifeless plane. Their smooth, metallic sheen long since vanished, probably encased in layers of oxidation and dust. Their structures may have even partially fused with the volcanic terrain surrounding them that we saw in the images they sent back. The noble metals like gold and platinum would still remain, possibly even visible in patches, gleaming faintly amidst the matte and scorched remnants of less durable materials. Now the probes likely resemble ancient corroded artefacts, darkened by chemical reactions and etched into Venus's hostile landscape, perhaps even adorned with yellow deposits of sulphur. However, although they are no longer whole, their story remains. The Venera 13 and 14 probes have never been talked about more. 
Sure, they are certainly weathered and worn today, but they do endure on a world where no life survives, but where they represent an incredible example of human curiosity elsewhere. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did then remember to like and subscribe for much more to come. And if you would like to support my channel even further then why not buy me a coffee? A small donation goes a long way and helps me improve what I am attempting to build. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.